One of the questions I receive a lot is how you can change the RAID type on a storage pool after you've already set it up. And the truth is that as time goes on, it gets harder and harder to do this. And generally, you want to try and plan this out first to ensure that you're implementing the correct RAID type based on your future needs. To help you plan this out, Synology has a RAID calculator that allows you to add different sized hard drives and determine the RAID type you'd like to use by being able to see exactly how much available space you'd have and how much would be used for protection. Now, in general, depending on the type of NAS you have, I generally recommend RAID 5 or SHR, and if you have a larger NAS, something with, say, 6 plus bays, you might want to take a look at RAID 6 or SHR 2. And we're quickly going to take a look at the differences between those, and I'll show you exactly what happens depending on the size hard drives you use by showing you how Synology's RAID calculator works. But in general, RAID 5 and SHR are very similar, and RAID 6 and SHR 2 are very similar. With RAID 5 and SHR, you have one drive that can fail without losing any data. And if that drive was to fail, you can go through and you can pop in a new drive and it will rebuild that RAID array and you won't lose any data and you'll have the same amount of protection after the rebuilding is done. With RAID 6 or SHR 2, you have two drives where that can happen. So if you have a NAS with eight bays, for example, and you're using RAID 6, you will have two drives that can fail at any point in time and you will not lose any data. So if the drive fails, you can put a new hard drive in and it will rebuild that RAID array and you'll be back to square one at that point. So in this example, you're going to see that I have added two 12 terabyte hard drives and two 4 terabyte hard drives. And with SHR, we will have 20 terabytes of usable storage space and 12 terabytes of protection. But with RAID 5, you're going to see that we have 12 terabytes of usable space and 4 terabytes will be used for protection. And then 16 terabytes of that is unused. And the reason for that is because RAID 5 utilizes the drive with the least amount of storage space. So in this example, even though we have two 12 terabyte hard drives, every single one of those drives to the RAID 5 array appears as if it's four terabytes because it can only utilize the hard drive size with the least available space. So in essence, we have four four terabyte drives here and we're losing eight terabytes each of those 12 terabyte drives and that's how we get to the 16 terabytes of unused space. Now, in order to understand how SHR works, I'm not really going to talk about it here, but Synology has a great article that will explain it in detail. And the main takeaway is just that it's how the data is stored on those hard drives, which is where SHR and RAID 5 or SHR 2 and RAID 6 have their differences. So at this point, you might be asking yourself which you should use, SHR or RAID 5. And the main takeaway is that you need to try and forecast the types of hard drives that you're going to be putting into your NAS. So if you have the intention to always utilize the same hard drive size, it doesn't really matter. There's not going to be a difference. But if you'd like to get to a point where, similar to this example, you have two 12 terabyte drives and two 4 terabyte drives, it will definitely benefit you to use SHR because you're going to be able to utilize some of that space. Now, really quickly, shifting over to an SHR2 and a RAID 6 example, you're going to see that I added four 12 terabyte drives and two 4 terabyte drives. And with SHR2, you'll have 32 terabytes of usable storage space, and you'll have 24 terabytes that are used for protection. Now, with RAID 6, ironically, you're going to have 16 terabytes of usable space, eight terabytes used for protection, and 32 terabytes of unused space. Now, I like this example because if you were to actually remove those two four terabyte drives, you would have 24 terabytes of usable storage space and 24 terabytes used for protection. So as you'll see in this example, just because you have more hard drives in your NAS, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have more available storage space. So this is the first thing that I recommend absolutely everybody does before they even get their NAS and before they even order their hard drives. Because you have to try and plan out if you want flexibility, and if you do want flexibility, you should probably use SHR, or if you want to try and keep it standard, meaning using the same sized hard drives for every single drive bay, and in that case, it doesn't really matter, but it is important to understand the difference. 
So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about SHR, I'll leave that link in the description so that you can read about it directly from Synology and just kind of try and understand some of the differences between SHR and just regular RAID. Uh, but hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, if I could help out with anything, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.